Hi, everyone. In this podcast, we're addressing the state of mid-market lending in the U.S. and some advice for owners and management teams as they navigate choppy waters. My name is Chris Saramelli, and I'm the founder and managing partner of Balmoral Advisors. Balmoral Advisors is a mid-market focused investment bank that advises clients on mergers, acquisitions, refinancing, and capital raise. Joining me today is Tom Aronson, Vice Chairman and Head of Originations at Monroe Capital. With more than 30 years of experience in commercial lending and private debt, Tom is a highly seasoned expert in the industry. As a co-founder of Monroe Capital and a member of the firm's investment committee, he has played a key role in shaping the company's success. Monroe Capital is a distinguished boutique asset management firm that specializes in private credit markets. Their expertise spans a range of strategies, including direct lending, asset-based lending, specialty finance, opportunistic and structured credit, and equity. Since 2004, they have been providing capital solutions to clients across the United States and Canada. I'm thrilled to have Tom here to share his insights with us today. Hey, Tom, thanks for joining. My pleasure. So let's jump right in. And I'd like to level set for our viewers here, uh, folks who may not be familiar with the sort of capital that Monroe Capital provides. Now, Monroe's not an actual bank, correct? So where does it fit in with respect to the capital markets? So you're right. We're not a bank. We're an asset manager that has a number of private credit strategies. We, uh, we have a variety of sources of capital. So we go to the institutional market primarily, and we raise private capital. And we also have some public funds. Uh, some people might know us by seeing our BDC uh, listed on the NASDAQ. So we have public funds, but all in all, we have over $16 billion uh, uh, of capital that we use to lend out to, uh, to middle market businesses. We have eight offices around the US and one in uh, South Korea. Uh, we are known as a middle market lender, which for us, middle market is companies that are five to $75 million of EBITDA. We prefer to agent or lead the deal. We want to be that, that point lender on a deal. Uh, our size typically averages around 80 to 100 million that will hold, but we'll go as small as 25 million up to about 200 million of our hold position. Uh, we, uh, we lend to private companies, so these are family-run businesses, as well as some public companies, and many people who might be listening would be part of a private equity-owned business, and we do a lot of lending in the private equity space as well. We're known as generalists, so we lend across many different industries, and we do have niches, and our niches are more in the uh, recurring revenue or software space tech-enabled businesses, healthcare, media, sports, and we even have an opportunistic lending vertical. There's been a lot of scary economic uh, and political developments in the last year. And Monroe, as you said, you're a non-bank lender, so you're not a regulated bank, but nonetheless, there is SVB, it's a related fallout. Uh, we also have things like inflation, recession fears, war, interest rates, so if I'm the CFO of a mid-sized company in the U.S., what do I need to know about the state of the financing markets? Well, well th those are a lot of things you, you brought up. Certainly what that uh, boils down to is it's unstable. It's an unstable market. Uh, a lot of the recent conversation has been, because as you brought up, SVB focus has been on regional banks and the health of regional banks. Uh, but even with that, you know, things are starting to stabilize now. People are getting more confidence back in the regional banks. That was very short-lived. But, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, CFOs, a lot of businesses are, are really evaluating lenders. Uh, some of the things that um, you should know is there's still financing. There's still financing available. There are so many different sources of capital. Uh, but what, you know, us as a lender, what are we focused on right now? We're focused on the inflationary impacts, 
We're focused on recession. What's that going to do to the health of a business? We're focused on the rising interest rates. You know, how is that going to impact a business? And then coupled with all of that, what's happening? That's bringing enterprise valuations down. We are a lender that really does lend on what we believe the values of the businesses are. And today, when you put all of those together, what that means is values of businesses are, are dropping. So those are some of the things that we look at. That's what you're looking at as a lender. But you know, when you're working with management teams in their portfolio, what are the things that you want them focused on? Yeah, so we need uh, management teams. They need to be realistic. They need to understand there are a lot of uh, risks that are affecting their businesses today that lenders are looking at. So they need to focus on those two. They need to be conservative in how they're looking at the issues, the macro issues that face them today. You would be surprised how many uh, companies and management teams that we have been talking to recently that really haven't incorporated the macro risks that you and I identify into their business. So what, that, what does that mean? They'll come to us with requests with models, with projections, with things really that don't take into account you know, a lot of the things that I mentioned that we're focused on. So that usually means that their numbers are pro focused up and to the right. But for us, that means a lot of growth. They're projecting a lot of growth. And what we really want a management team to focus on, we want it to be realistic. Tell us what's impacting your business. Don't tell us you know, something that uh, we can look at and really poke holes in. Really think about what you're presenting to the bank. Be conservative and look, most importantly, look at your liquidity needs. Make sure you have the adequate liquidity in your business and show us how you're planning for potential impacts of a recession, whether that is a soft landing or a, a, a hard landing. Nobody knows yet. So what we all we can ask is that you're planning and planning conservatively as a management team. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. And that's something that I've heard from other folks as well. Because if, if you think about it, um, a lot of management teams, the last time we've seen something like this, and you know, none of these challenging situations are ever the same, but you go back to the Great Recession, that was in 2008, 2009. So we're talking almost 15 years ago at this point. And a lot of the management teams, especially these mid-market companies, you know, we're not around, at least not in the seats they're in back then. And so, you know, since then you've, you've had, you know, some pretty good times. So, you know, what we, we observe is that a lot of these management teams are just not used to dealing in this kind of a situation. So there's a big learning curve. How, how do you think teams should be communicating with you? And especially what should somebody do if they hit a rough patch, a covenant default or a hiccup or, or whatever? I mean, how should somebody approach that with you or with any other lenders? Yeah, I mean, I would say, first of all, communicate, communicate often, and have in the back of your, of your mind, no surprises. Lenders, historically, I, if it can be a bank, it can be a MES lender, it could be you know, someone like us, uh, who does more unit tranche lending, uh, which is um, more senior debt. We don't like surprises. So as a management team, some of the things that you should really think about is Keep your lender informed, communicate often, plan for the worst, and really tell them what you're thinking. What are you doing? Everyone is expecting a business to have challenges. That's just the, the environment we are in today. But what we want to see is that you as a management team is thoughtful. Don't try to hide something. Don't think, oh, I just won't tell the lender until something happens, like a covenant default, and then I'll spring it on them. That's the worst thing that can happen. Uh, and we always say, why didn't you just let us know? If this is what you were thinking, we could have planned. It's hard for a lender to react quickly. All we wanna know is let us know the challenges you're facing. Let us know early. Let us know, know what we need to do to work with you, the borrower, to get you through a, a rough patch or over a hurdle. It is much better than having a surprise. Yeah, that, that's such a good point, because especially over the last few years when we had COVID and you had all of the stimulus money and you had, you know, the Fed basically, certainly with respect to commercial banks, kind of easing up a little bit. Um, it was a lot easier for management teams to just kind of 
you know, slide by with little stuff. Hey, we're going to be a little bit late on a payment or a report, or we have a little foot fault. And I think what you're saying is that what we're hearing and seeing a lot is that those days are over. And if, if you're going to have an issue, you need to be on top of it right away and communicate it right away. Otherwise it's going to create a whole lot of angst. Yes. I mean, usually, or hopefully you've been thoughtful of who your lender is and you're picking a lender who is a good partner, one who does communicate with you and can react. We always say, you know, it's easy to have a lender in the good times. You want to have a good lender in the bad times. You want to have someone who can communicate. You know, when when times are really robust, when and when things are moving quickly, a lot of borrowers pick a lender based just on price. And a lot of times you learn the most about a lender now when things aren't exactly perfect. You know, a lot of management teams, we always say, we're going to get projections and I can bet you 100 times over, you're going to miss those projections. You may exceed them, you may fall short of them, but to hit them exactly is extremely difficult. And no matter what, either scenario, it poses challenges and it, it requires communication with your lender. So we always try to bring to our borrowers that ability to communicate with us. And these are times that are really important because no one knows if we're going to have a hard landing, a soft landing, or what kind of recession we will go. I think everyone knows we're going into a recession. We just don't know how that's going to affect every business today. No, great, great point. And to your point about um, picking a really good lender, it seems like that there could be some benefits to working with a non-bank lender. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people that are listening aren't familiar with the non-bank community. You know, um, a, a lot of uh, your CFOs probably have only dealt with their commercial bank, but someone like us who raise institutional capital that has over $16 billion of assets under management, we oftentimes work very closely with a bank because a bank is focused on things sometimes that are um, more fee generated uh, asset or fee generation, which might be um, uh, just depository, maybe international services, it may be investment management or a lot of things, but maybe they're not in the mode to provide significant amount of term debt. So often we'll get a call from a lender that wants to work very closely with us. And we do that in partnership. So just because you're working with a non-bank lender like Monroe Capital doesn't mean you have to give up your primary commercial banking relationship. Matter of fact, you need that commercial banking relationship because a non-bank lender doesn't control deposits. So your cash management has to go through the bank. Many times a revolver is going to go through a bank. That's not what we're in business to do. We're providing more of the term debt. We can do revolvers, but we're very good partner with a bank. So we're not mutually exclusive. Sometimes we are, but for the most part, there may be an avenue where uh, you're going to your commercial bank for a request and maybe they can't do everything you need. Maybe you want to buy out a, a partner. Maybe you see a competitor that is struggling that you want to take advantage of. It often, you may go to the, uh, your, your commercial bank or you may come to Monroe Capital and you'll say, hey, is there something you could do together? And we do a lot of lending in that capacity. So it's just important to really make sure you have the right lender to satisfy your needs as a borrower. That's great. That's that's really great insight, Tom. So it's, it's a lot different world than it was the past couple of years. Um, and and with, with everything going on, again, you have to be much, much more careful, much more on top of your numbers and your business and make sure that you're really careful with the lender that you choose. So... Tom, listen, your, your insights today were incredibly relevant. Thank you so much for joining. Um, as we all know, access to capital can make such a difference in the health of a business. If, you, if any of you would like to delve deeper into any of these topics, please don't hesitate to call me or Tom. Our uh, contact information is at the bottom of the screen. Goodbye for now. Thank you all for watching. And I'll be back again soon with another important topic for our listeners. Thanks again. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Bye-bye.